We're looking ahead to the UEFA Champions League on Sportsmax 2 Tuesday morning, Jamaica time, uh, 12.45 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean, Inter Milan against Salzburg. You don't want to miss that one. And uh, of course, right after that, we'll have Sevilla against Arsenal, 2 o'clock, 3 in the Eastern Caribbean, also on Sportsmax 2. And also on Wednesday, Barcelona will go up against Shakhtar Donetsk. 11.45 a.m. that should be. 12.45 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean. You can watch that on Sportsmax 2. And then also on Wednesday, Paris Saint-Germain against AC Milan. Wednesday, 2 p.m., 3 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean on Sportsmax 2. One nil here at the Michael University College, San Diego over Wilmer's boys as we prepare for action in the second half. LJ Williams is still with me. It hasn't been a, a a bad first half by any stretch of the imagination. Both teams trying to play some football. Wilmer's though they have been struggling, I think, in terms of attacking options uh, when they are in the final third. Yeah, I think that they have the options, actually. I think it's just how far the distances are between them. They're maybe trying to stay a bit too close. And yes, that is or can be an effective way of attacking. But I do think if they're facing a compact block as they are against St. Diego, I think it would be best for them to spread out a bit, try and move around, shift around the St. Diego defence and try and get at them that way instead of just trying to pelt those shots from the top of the box. Uh, I don't think that's really caused... Murray in that St. Jago goal, too much issues so far. Only really the two set pieces where there was miscommunication on the St. Jago part in terms of their defense has really given them a problem. So I think Wilmers need a lot of calmness in terms of what they're trying to achieve in an attacking sense. And for St. Jago, I think it's also a measure of calmness. I think they need to be a bit more, have a bit more temperament on the ball and then try and push it forward through the distribution from their center backs and especially through their goalkeeper on that screen, Leighton Murray. Well, Rowan Milford is the one that was beaten by Murray as far as that stunning goal we saw in the first half. And it's still being talked about. And the St. Jago with the advantage in the aftermath of that strike. How will Wilmers respond? I reckon that they haven't got out of first gear. And uh, even their spectators are, are, are in a bit of a, a funk. And you suspect that the football will now have to try and shake them out of their apathy. And it is Wilmers who will kick the second half on the way. They'll be kicking towards their school. It's in Jago, on the other hand, will be going towards the crossroads area. And uh, let's see what Wilmers will offer in this second half. Desperately looking for the equalizer early. And, uh, and this one is over kicked. And we'll go for a, a goal kick to St. Jago High. Just to confirm the substitution there, David Morris has come onto the park for the Wilmerians. Came on for DeAndre Reed, one of their center backs. filling in right around there marking a significantly bigger player let's see how he will fare in those aerial duels St. Jago couldn't keep hold of the ball yeah pass just a little bit behind him Yeah, of course, they would have met earlier this season, these two teams. And St. Jacob coming out with the 2-0 the win, but they did meet in 2015 a couple of times in the first round. And uh, just one goal scored over the two matches that they played back in 2015 with Wilmers coming out 1-0 victors the first time they met that year. And the second game ending in a, a nil-all draw. So it's always been close encounters between these two teams. And we're not seeing anything different today. No, we haven't. Just a set piece deciding the match at the moment. Hey. 
Well, the Wilmers girls are also across to cheer their counterparts as San Diego looking for a second here and no issues for Rowan Melford who goes long and uh, trying to get on the end of that one was Dakers. Yeah, I said that last season he was deployed in a more attacking role and it seems as if in the second half he will be in that attacking area. A little bit of a shift with Adan Day moving to the right hand side of the attack. Well, let's see how it will work out for Wilmers. Oh, yes. Got away by from three or four defenders and finally interception made. And St. Jago trying to get out of the own defensive third. And Wilmers with the hard press wins it back. Can they get something with this? Not even a bag of chips. And that's easily handled by Leighton Murray. Well, the support is ramping up. And I tell you, that came with the power of female support because the boys were pretty quiet in the first half. Yeah, that tends to happen. Well, here's Wilmers. Dakers coming more and more into life with his attacking intent. Another whist on the play. And it's a free kick to Wilmers. This could be interesting. Can they utilize this opportunity? They have been unable to break down the St. Jago high defense. Let's see what they can do with this set piece. Almost in a short corner position. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes direct towards goal. Just to try and create some havoc. Three-man wall constructed by the Ravens. As Bulmers looking for the equalizer all along the turf. And the keeper I reckon that he saw it late, but still managed to, to hold on. Yeah, he was seemingly alive to the situation from the very start. Looks as if he was intentional as well by Dakers to roll that one along the ground. That's a booming kick by Murray. It's going to go straight through, however, for a goal kick. Every time I see one of those long kicks, I have to go to Wolver Wolf on the sidelines to see his reaction. I think he has a, an interesting dynamic with his goalkeeper, especially in this game. he has a keeper that Man United fans would have thought Onana would have been. Ball played to the edge of the box, clearance made. Wilmers will try again. They're bossing the possession so far in the second half as they seek the equaliser. Hamilton and this ball swung in. Jackson goes all the way through. No issues there for Murray. They have a free kick in their own half. And another change is going to be made. This time by San Diego. 
Oswald Lyons is getting ready to come on. Ronnie Williams is out. Good win by Basenti. Basenti with a ding to Walters who collects that one deep. Lays it off out wide. Duaney. Walters, Duaney. Walters will win it back. Roma's really looking to pin St. Jago in in the second half so far. Haven't created any clear, clear goal scoring opportunities, however. Percenti sends it across. Lovely first touch, wonderful second. But the third touch, the shot straight to Leighton Murray. I may have jinxed it a little bit because that was the best one so far for Wilmers. And well Anandé. Worked. Yeah, well, really well worked. And that one had to be dealt with another booming kick. Has presented St. Diego with the opportunity to maybe get this throwing straight into the box. Long throw inside the area, headed away. Some pressure being applied by Milton Lacane. Woolman's getting, or rather, St. Jago getting ready to make a, a double substitution. As the wind picks up here at the Micro University College, the sun was here for a few minutes and, and now it's gone. And maybe some rain is on its way here. In the meantime, St. Jago looking for a second goal. Taken short. Ball played inside the area. Big chance here! Has it crossed the line? The flag is up for offside. Saving. Saving. Wilmers in the process. Yeah, that was an almighty scrap on the goal line. It looks as if it was Jaden Jones who was denied getting his second goal of the season. Oh, that's too much on it. And the goalkeeper will watch that. Go into touch. Here's another look at it, Lejay. Hmm. And he didn't cross the line, you know. No, he didn't. So it was actually really good goalkeeper work by Melford to make the initial save and then to recover to stop that one. Zavon Miller with four goals to his name is getting ready to come on for St. Jago and so too Chazre Johnson. Alex Hall comes out. Raheem Anderson also makes his departure. Well, no, Hall is still remained on the park. I'm almost sure the number 11 went up, but it's actually Jade Jones who has come off. player that was probably really lucky and unlucky in the same game had a glorious chance was marginally offside but as you see I, I think that's Dante Dekas receiving some treatment 
off the pitch. Woolman's temporarily down to 10 players. Yeah, quite an eventful game for Jones. Probably should have been sent off. Probably should have had a goal. Lucane with a long throw inside the area. And there was an appeal for a handled ball there inside the box. San Diego wanted something. They still might get something. Oh, that's a lovely turn, you know. Twisting, turning, looking for a shot on target before he finally lost it. Shazre Johnson. Here's Walters collecting deep. I really do like him as a centre forward. Tries his very best to link up the play, and there's another example. Walters cutting inside. Was he cut down? The referee was right on the spot. He said no. And yeah, this referee is having an interesting game, letting some things go. The Woolmer stand, let's call it that. Jam packed. St. Jago with a corner kick now. how far these two teams can go in the Manning Cup competition this year. Seems as if they have players that can send their teams far into the competition as corner kick is taken short and cleared out by the Wilmers defense. Not too far out though. Duaney lost it. San Diego Firing an effort that easily handled by Rod Melford. Long ball upfield. Not clear properly. Walters trying to win it and bulldoze his way through. Yeah, it is a good question you post, Donald, how far these teams can go. A team like St. Diego just be looking for anything above the second round, I think. They've gone to the second round every year since 2014, barring the COVID year in 2021. So that's a really good pass. It really is over on the left-hand side, trying to utilize his speed and his trickery. Sends this one straight into the hands of Murray, though. Grateful as per usual. As per usual. Yes, yeah, so St. Diego will just be looking for something more substantial than the second round. Haven't really been to the final embers of the Manning Cup. In quite All over some the top, time. looking for Walters. The keeper is off his line. The flag, though, is up against their number nine. He's having a really impressive game, the 15 year old. Dropping off the line, now threatening to go beyond it. But in terms of Woolmers, how far they can go, they would just be looking to get back to the top that's what they're used to although after you pass the 1939 Manning Cup win they've only had two since so I guess uh, maybe in some eyes that may put a dent in their success so oh, that's nicely done and uh, the shot goes straight to Melford Walters, lovely first touch, and the finish is there! Adon Day has done it for the team from Hero Circle! His 13th goal this season, and he has been knocking all afternoon, and finally he takes the opportunity 
and at Michael, it's 1-1. Wilmers have been the better team and they've done something that St. Jago have been trying to do all game. Booming clearance from the goalkeeper causes chaos and Adande made sense of that chaos with a silky finish. Really good centre forward play yet again. And the man they call Pero has equalised for Wilmers and in this tight, tight encounter in zone G, it is now one all between the two teams sitting on top. Walters with his third assist this season, you'd say. Hasn't he been instrumental for Wilmers this afternoon, the 15-year-old, their big number nine? And now this game will come alive. St. Jago looking to respond. Miller had lost it out. Oh, that's wonderfully done by Dimitri Jackson. Jackson again. Adon Day trying to go into a next gear. Ball whipped inside, held by Murray. is going to get some attention off off to the sidelines he's done a lot of running and now he has his 13th goal of the season yeah and this Wilmer's team haven't done a lot of rotation throughout the season so he has a lot of minutes in his legs already Punted to take us. Coach Wooler Wolf mulling over, mulling over some changes possibly or what he can change in this game to possibly gift St. Jago away back into the lead as a Wilmer's throw comes in. Yep, St. Jago trying to clear and it is a booming clearance, you know. Asking Miller to do some work to try and win it. Lovely touch, wonderful pass to almost went through. Keeper is off his line and <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. And in the aftermath of being in the driver's seat may have injured himself like Lane Murray yeah, was it the most conventional claim there not a ga bad game to witness especially if you're watching on the sports max app you can download it today to keep abreast of all the action in uh, the Issa Schoolboy football competition this year, you can watch matches free on Sportsmax Plus. Yes, free of cost on the Sportsmax app. Download it now from the Google Play Store or the App Store. As we take a look at uh, the equalizer, Walters to Day, and Day with a, a good finish there. Equalizer for Wilmer's boys. Day doing well to win that one. Bring his 
his teammate into it as well, Duaney. But the throw goes in favor of St. Jago. Alex Thomas is also in the building. Was with the Bulmas program a few seasons ago, Alex Thomas. As coach and even before then as player as well, the former national youth defender. Here's an opportunity. Walters inside the box. Walters, oh, that's a lovely block against the shot. Good work here by Alex Hall. And they say that he has five assists to his name, but you can call that one an assist with that lovely challenge. Yeah, he's really been putting a shift in that left back all game, Alex Hall. But Wilmers threatening yet again. Fourth corner kick for Wilmers. Can they go ahead at the back post? Connection made! It's wide of the mark. The captain coming in at the back post, Benjamin Griffiths. Yeah, might have been better served trying to hit that one across goal again. Never. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're probably never going to trouble Leighton Murray from an angle like that. As he prepares to launch this one long. Morris to take this. Dickers gave him the thumbs up for the effort. Flick on Vicente Duhaney. Probably thought Vicente was right behind him. to the edge of the box that's headed out. Dakers with the delivery. It's a good one! How has he missed it? Was that Adon Day again at the back post? Tried to make a proper connection. May have injured himself in the process too. But what a ball that was from Dante Dakers. It was a beautiful cross and at the back post it was there. Stealing in unmarked. Tried to kick it down. Just bounced over the top of the net. Two players down now, the St. Jago keeper, Leighton Murray and Day himself. But that was a golden chance for Wilmots to go 2 1 up in this one. It did bounce higher than he anticipated. Day, as he tried to make proper connection on it. Deliberately hit it in the ground, I felt, because, because the ball was so high. More than likely, if he was under it, it would have gone skywards. It, it did go skywards at the end, but... It's a bruising battle here at the Michael.
takers with a hopeful ball over the top this, on this occasion. Day on it. Ball swept inside, was looking for Walters who was making the run at the near post. Trying to switch the play, Wilmers. Mitchell inside to Harris. Hall. Mitchell. JD Mitchell trying to go long and switch the play himself. Harris, looking for options, they've lost it in a dangerous area, lovely skill, the keeper is off his line, day again, and his shot was blocked, or maybe he was trying to supply the pass in the middle. Yeah, a bit too casual in the middle of the pitch there by Javar, Harris for St. Diego gave it away and more good skill, they increasing his influence on the game as it goes on. Ball played inside the box at the back post. A couple of Wolmerians were there. Including the captain. Nothing doing at the end of all of that. Trying to get a snapshot off on that occasion, Milton looking. Ball played through the middle, the keeper again is off his line, he'll get there. Leighton Murray. Had a flick taught, but Wilmers trying to regain the possession. And they do. Easy does it. Walters has been running all game, but couldn't quite supply that final pass. Was intercepted. Here's Walters again. Walters with the effort. <laughs> that did not miss by much. Well, Janae is downstairs with a, another sideline report for us. What do you have for us, Janae? Well, well done on a few minutes ago during the Wilmers attack. Alex Hall, the number 11 for St. Jago, suffered a minor injury which his shoulder had been slipped out of socket. The medics had attended to him, and now he's back on the pitch. Thanks, Jenny. Yeah, those are usually pretty painful. But uh, good to see him recovered and back on the pitch. Continuing the fight for San Diego. Jago now with a throw in. They've been trying to send these in long all game. It has created some havoc. Let's see what this one can provide. Four inside the box was waiting on it. They were waiting on it, but didn't reach them. San Jago will try again. But uh, Wilmer's on the prowl now. And Jackson looking for options. 
Presenti. Day. Lovely stuff by Wilmers. Presenti. Trying to set up takers on the right hand side. Yeah, I think he was trying to do a bit too much on that occasion. Maybe could have released his teammate on the left also. In the end, was caught in a few mines and couldn't really get off an efficient shot. But I think in the second half, 13 minutes to go, it's really been all Wilmers. St. Jago struggling to impose themselves, especially in the middle of the park. Although they did have a huge chance to make it 2-0. That seems ages ago now. Yeah, ages ago. And Wilmers will try again. Jackson, again trying to slip through on the right-hand side, but nothing doing there, that avenue. Well, we have some 12 minutes to go in this one. Not sure if both teams have run out of gas already. I don't think that's the case. Um, Wilmers certainly are the team that's pushing. They're still pushing. Walters, of course, being at the forefront of a lot of everything that they've done well so far today. Yeah, I, I like what he has provided for them. Yeah, at such a young age as well. Seems to have a, a lot of the character, characteristics to be a really good player, a really good centre forward. Here's an opportunity here, lofted inside the box at the back post. Oh, that's a, a good hold by Leighton Murray. Maybe a leading candidate for player of the game. Uh, Lucane tried to get on the end of it. Doesn't have a lot of support right now, Lucane. Needs that support. And in the end, it almost seemed inevitable that he would have lost it out in the attacking third with that lack of support. I think the support was there. I just don't think he chose the right option. They're looking to skip past his marker. Wins a throw in the end. He still seems to be in some discomfort. Yeah. That's a birthday boy from yesterday. <laughs> Didn't hear a lot from him throughout this game because I suppose he's still recovering, right? You know, you just have to save it for the important moments. Ooh! <laughs> and there have been a couple. Go kick. They again in pain. Some subs warming up, hoping to get in on the action. Parents and teachers out in their numbers to support their schools. a really good crowd in for this televised match or first at uh, the Michael first at a university I'm told at the schoolboy football level and it's already one of my favorite venues it yeah, really has delivered for a first time venue good game good crowd Good field, most importantly, as well. Hopefully, we'll be seeing more matches here throughout the season. Mitchell provides the ball out wide to Lions. Mitchell gets it back. Well, the pass from him was a little bit too shallow. And Dakers steps inside and Looking to get the return ball. The clash of the 11s.
day can he get there? <laughs> he has a nose for the spectacular, Adam Day. And trying a bit of cheeky skill there, didn't come off in the end. Seems as if Alex Hall has possibly run his race. Well, it's just about time for a sports match at moment of the game. And I'm only thinking one moment here. I could be wrong. Of course it is. What a hit by Leighton Murray. Yep, that's a goalkeeper. That's their number one being number one with a thunderous strike. Seemed like eons ago. And they could not catch him. That's a Sports Max app moment of the game, courtesy of the Sports Max app. Thank you, Leighton Murray. Mitchell lost it. Now it's with Brooks. Walters. Day gives chase. Last touch off Day. Good work by Oswald Lyons. Punted to the edge of the box. JD Mitchell. JD Mitchell swinging wide of the target. Looking for his third goal this season. San Diego's number 10. And Wilmers is number one. Seemed quite unbothered in the end. Melford. Here's Wilmers again, looking for the goal, which could be the clincher. Day does well. Day still going through. Day lost it. An opportunity here for Wilmers. A wonderful strike that is pushed around for a corner kick by Leighton Murray. And what a save that was. He caught that one really true, Dimitri Jackson. Coming up from that right wing back roll, it fell to him. He controlled it well. Oh, and it's just fingertips. Oh, it's actually his chest. He put everything behind that he, one. He did. He had to. Wasn't the cleanest of saves, but they don't have to be. That came to him quicker than he expected. Went by his hands. But his body was in the way, the rest of his body. Leighton Murray, man of the match, maybe. Yeah, he's my leading candidate right now, but of course, we still have to see how the rest of the game plays out. Because Adan Day, I think, is firmly on his heels.
Corner kick to Wilmers. Dwayne is delivery at the back post and again a hand on it from Murray. Back to back corners. Yeah, kind of flapped at that one, but it was enough in the end. Seventh corner kick for Wilmer's boys. Here's the delivery. Again at the back post, heads go up. The header was blocked. Wilmer still with the possession. Decided to go all the way to the half line. They're recycling it. Lovely connection. Thinking of a shot. And that's going to be a corner kick. Yep, another corner kick for Wilmer's. They're eighth now. And St. Jago. Are they going to make the change? No. After the score and the kick. They're ready for it. Nathaniel Brooks. Taken short. It's Brooks. Hesitated. Then the shot was blocked. And St. Jago will try to come out. Hamilton couldn't find a teammate. And St. Jago, they've kept this one in play. Six minutes of stoppages to be played. St. Jago primed to make a substitution here. Tavian Byfield will come on. He replaces the substitute, Oswell Lyons. Ball inside the box. They are looking and begging for a handled ball inside the area, St. Jago. And it goes the other way for Wilmers. And they try to break the halfway line, but the whistle has already gone. They do have a free kick in their favor. Five minutes to go in stoppage time. Punted to inside the area. No issues there for Murray. Oh, it has come all the way through to Miller. Oh, Miller holds the ball off. Trying to get that one inside, but didn't have the strength to do so. Yeah, that was a fatigued attempt at a cross from the substitute. Wilmer's back on the goal hunt. Again, they are trying to, to switch the play. Dakers. Jackson with a throw. <laughs> Not sure who he was trying to find. Lovely collection. Lost it though. Mitchell trying to find Lucane. Across to the right hand side, St. Jago, dangerous, it's Lucane, it's straight to goalkeeper Ron Melford. That might have been it for St. Jago, good chance, they had the numbers forward, it was well worked in the end, again trying to stroke it home at the first time of asking. Here they come again, St. Jago looking for the knockout punch. 
just a little bit lackadaisical there. The flag goes up belatedly for a free kick in favor of the Ravens. Midway through stoppage time, is there another twist to be had in this tale, in this battle at the Michael? This could be dangerous. Tavian Byfield is across there to take it for the Ravens. Byfield's delivery inside the area. Headed away and then the clearance. And that has gone on the roof over on the far side. Maybe another long throw coming up. Here's a shot from distance. It's wide of the mark. Javar Harris. Looking for his, what, eighth goal this season. Here, number seven. Band is on their last legs there. Walters winning that header. They've lost it in a dangerous area. St. Jacob trying to pounce. Miller out wide. Does he have the strength on this occasion? Cutting inside. Miller. And I think they were trying to return it back to him. But here's Mitchell over the top, just over the top too. But there was a deflection of that shot from J.D. Mitchell. It's a corner kick to San Diego. And now it's the Spanish Town team that are surging towards the end of this one. Corner here. It's taken Mitchell short. takes it short. Harris has it. Trying to get the return ball from Mitchell. It didn't work. And Woolmer's trying to respond now. Turned around the corner. And that's a really good interception. Maybe they'll call a truce, but there's still about a half a minute remaining. Maybe just one more attack for the Ravens. Building through the middle. What opportunity is in front of them now? Well, the referee has seen enough. That's the end of the game. And it's all squared here at the Michael. Leighton Murray with a fabulous hit in the first half, a free kick. And then Young Day getting his 13th goal this season. The equalizer. And uh, both teams putting on a good show and uh, in the end Wilmers with the point they sit alone at the top of the group in this Manning Cup one one the final score after 90 minutes As we take a look at the, the full-time highlights of this one, St. Jago with a lot of the running in the opening few minutes. Lecane with the effort on target. Good save that was by Melford. And then this delivery sent inside. And uh, Melford had a lot of work to do, but then this kick. Ridiculously good by Leighton Murray. 
Yep, the St. Jago custodian is the one who came up with this miracle moment in the 32nd minute. And uh, St. Jago with the lead. And then he came up big for them at the back as well. Intercepting that one. Wilmers kept on pressing, kept on trying. Day in particular, that was the strongest effort from him. And Murray was having fun between the sticks. Ball play inside, what an opportunity this was. And then the flag eventually went up for offside, I believe. It uh, went up against their number 17, Raheem Anderson. And then Day to Walters, back to Day. What a finish. His 13th goal this season. And both Day and Walters in the thick of the action in the attacking third. And it's uh, that combination once again proving to be a handful. They really do work hard for this Woolmers team. And that was equaliser. Woolmers had a couple of chances to win it. Lovely ball inside from Dacus today. And then Day again, almost doing it by himself. And then Dimitri Jackson's effort, forcing a stop from Murray. St. Jay could have won it late. Lucane's effort was lukewarm to say the least. And we ended at one apiece. As we take a look at the statistics at the end of this one, Wilmers with 13 shots, three of which were on target. St. Jago had all 16 shots, six were on target, 18 fouls committed in this game, and there were eight corner kicks apiece, pretty even. Also pretty even, the possession, 50-50. The KFC big deal man of the match. His name is Leighton Moore. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, you are pretty much a big deal. We don't oftentimes see goalkeepers taking free kicks, but you said that this, is, this isn't your first occasion. No. Okay, well, St. Jager High ending with a goal apiece. How do you feel about today's matchup? Yeah, I, feel, I feel very good. I don't think my team played bad. We played a fairly good game, but what I expect from my team, I expect better because I know what the guys can do. Me, myself, I know what I can do. So I expected better from the team. Well, expected a win. But going into the second round, you're going to face tougher opponents. Do you think that you will face the challenge of taking any more free kicks in the future? Yes, miss. Definitely. Okay, okay well, congratulations, Leighton, and all the best for the season. Okay, thank you. Now we welcome the coach of St. Jago. Hi, Coach Wolf. St. Jago High had a very good first half, especially after the goal, but in the second half, you struggled a bit. What do you think might have went wrong? Um, I thought the players lacked focus a bit. Um, they were rushing the game as well. They wanted the game to finish when the game just started. So I thought we were just rushing it and we need to just have more patience. We lack patience and put us in the ball. More. Well, your goalkeeper. He, he was the one that scored the free kick. Do you think that you can look at him as your new dead ball specialist? Um, to be honest, he's been, he been practicing all week. Um, we know what Jed can do. We know that he have a free kick. and It's just more better things to expect from San Diego and the goalkeeper as well in terms of free kicks. Well, coach, are you disappointed not finishing at the top of the table and knowing that you may have tougher opponents to face in the future? Um, a bit disappointed on the result um, because we, we wanted a win. But whatever opponent comes along, at some point, some point in time, we have to face tough opponents. So we just have to deal with whosoever we get, uh, whosoever comes. Well, on a lighter note, what are the positives that you can take away from today's game? Um, first and foremost, they did well with the platform. Um, no better, plat plat better platform to showcase the talent. I thought we did well on that. That's positive going forward to the bigger stages. And it's only going to get bigger and better for Jago. And I'm proud of the boys today. They did, they did well. OK, well, well done, coach. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. And now we welcome the coach of Woolman's Boys. His name is Jerome Waite. 
coach, even though the scoreline is a goal apiece, do you think that being at the top of the group and having a superior goal difference made your boys have a relaxed mindset coming into today's game? Uh, not necessarily. I think Diego came here. They, they, they came to purpose. They, they fought well. Uh, I think the difference was the goalkeeper who earned that man of the match. And not only to score the goal, but in the end to, to defend well to ensure that, you know, they didn't give up more than one goals. But the Wolmers team, um, we show character, we show determination, you know, so to fight, to fight back from that one goal deficit and to get the, the, the equaliser is good. Well, coach, the game and your team especially picked up momentum in the 60th minute. Going into the second round, how do you get 100% from your boys from minute one? Well, you talk about 100%, but what we we'll have to focus on now is the areas that we still have to work on. And even before, so we have our fair share of injuries. And that is something that we will have to take the time out to deal with, you know, to ensure that the team can go as far as possible. Well, thank you, Coach. All right. So, yeah, 1-1 one, one between Wilmers Boys and St. Jago. There are a couple of other matches that uh, were contested today in Group G. As we take a look at the table, Wilmers confirming their spot atop the standings on 25 points. St. Jago, uh, three points behind. That's how they started off uh, the day. Three points behind Wilmers couldn't quite close that gap. And you see Pepin, Vauxhall, Donald Quarry and Ascot completing the group. Well, we are in the shadows of the Wilmers Boys School and we're here at the Michael University College as two schools with a lot of history behind them face off with each other. Wilmers at home, 294 years young against St. Jago High, who have been around for 279 years. It's a royal battle here and it's one to look out for in the Issa Manning Cup as Wilmer's boys entertain St. Jago High. Wherever you're watching all over the world, thank you so much for joining our coverage here on the Home of Champions. My name is Donald Oliver. We did mention that Wilmer's boys is a stone's throw away and you just saw a shot of the building which is away to our right uh, where uh, some of uh, the Wilmerians are looking over uh, the fencing and you can call it the grandstand for this afternoon here at the Michael University College. It's a wonderful uh, playing field that we have here and uh, one of the, the better kept secrets as well in the corporate areas being one of the, the better fields in Kingston, Jamaica. And of course, it will host this matchup here. Uh, Leger Williams is with me. Uh, just a few hours after celebrating uh, a really um, interesting birthday uh, night, I suppose, and uh, a whole evening of celebrations. We have the video evidence, but he doesn't have a uh, hangover uh, this afternoon, and we're looking forward to hearing his thoughts on this matchup. Yeah, and we're going to get them really soon, right after this national anthem.
Yeah, thank you for the introduction, Donald. And really excited to be here for this encounter. You mentioned the age of the schools. Both of these schools are quite ancient ones in terms of what we see across Jamaica. And, but I don't think that we're going to see any type of ancient football from either of these teams. Both of these teams have been very exciting, I think, so far this season by quite a distance the two best teams in Zone G in the Manning Cup. Woolmers, they, they lost out to St. Jago on match week three of the Manning Cup. They'll be looking to uh, atone for that. A lot of that, as their coach attributed, was terrain as we have the officials here. Referee Romaro Francis, he'll be assisted by Jermaine Page, Kennardo Hall, and the fourth official, O'Hara Headley. But yeah, the first encounter between these teams was really punctuated by really, really inclement weather. The game had to be played over two days. So yeah, Wilmers will be looking to atone for that 2 nil loss that they suffered to the hands of St. Diego. And this is the team that they put out to do it. Yep, as we take a look at uh, the Wilmers outfit, Ron Melford is between the sticks. It's a 3-4-3 formation, the defenders being DeAndre Reed, Benjamin Griffiths and Jay Shorn Hamilton, the number 12 in the middle of the park. Daquan Duaney on the left, Dimitri Jackson on the right. Duaney, of course, with five goals so far, but as well as seven assists. Dante Dakers, Nathaniel Brooks in the middle of the park and up top. Adon Day on the left with 12 goals. Jaden Walters through the middle with 11 goals and Jaheim Besenti uh, with uh, one goal to his name. Yeah, of course, the man to look out for me is Nathaniel Brooks. Such a good season so far, carrying on from last. And yeah, classic 3-4-3 from their coach, Jerome Waite. Brooks with nine goals and 13 assists to his name as well. As we take a look to St. Jago and how they will line up. They have a traditional 4-4-2 formation with Murray between the six. Hall, uh, Tahir Beckford, Trey Malik Smith and Williams, the back four. Uh, J.D. Mitchell, Javar Harris with seven goals to his name. Uh, Jane Jones and Javoy Wright in the middle of the park. And up top, Milton Lucane, the number 19 and Ram Anderson, uh, who has three goals and assists to his name. Yes, St. Jago already an impressive win over Wilmers. They'll be looking to carry on that form. The only team to beat Wilmers so far this season, that 2-0 win. They have the confidence to do it. They know that they can do it. Let's see what they can serve up today. Javar Harris on the right, the number seven, the captain of St. Jago for Wilmers. Benjamin Griffiths, the big center back with the number 21. They're at the toss, of course as they choose which team will kick off first and in which direction they will go. But overcast conditions here, really cool. Although I suppose my colleagues who went to Manchester recently would emphatically state that this is not really cool. Manchester would be really cool, but uh, relatively comfortable conditions for the players this afternoon. Yeah, and for us as well, uh, you keep on leaving out our comfort, Donald. But yeah, I think that this is a good type of weather for exciting football you know maybe they won't the players won't burn out it's been a long season so far so yeah i'm expecting a lot of high energy high pressing and high quality attacking football from both teams you're really anticipating this one you mentioned before that the first time that they played the season this a team got the better of wilmers over the course of uh, two days, I almost said two legs, but it was two days, the uh, match interrupted by rain and uh, St. Jago won that game by two goals to nil. Wilmers definitely on home soil. will be hoping to turn that one around. And the boys from Hero Circle, of course, would be wanting to change the narrative which has developed over the last few weeks in regards to lo a location nearby their schools residents as uh, we get the match on the way here with San Diego trying to to move forward immediately on the right hand side through uh, Javoy right San Diego will be kicking of course towards the Wilmers school Wilmers at the moment will be kicking towards the crossroads area and up Marasco Road long throw to be taken and is inside the box it's headed away not convincingly though an opportunity to try and clear and Wilmers they eventually do so San Diego looking to start on the front foot there and evading a challenge already 
It's Alex Hall. Oh, it can be dangerous. He has already has five assists to his name so far this season. The left back who can also play in an attacking position. But right now, Bulmer's defending and they're trying to do so stubbornly here. Williams forcing to go, forced to go all the way back. And there was a, a late challenge on a, a Ravens defender. And it did come from Jaden Walters. There is Jerome Waite still getting used to him not being a part of a certain Charlie Smith franchise and even more recently with Arnett Gardens at the Premier League level but uh, he's come to Wilmers his second season with the Wilmerians although although I did say that we are not used to seeing him at Charlie Smith and in the Arnett Gardens community he was in fact a Wilmerian uh, so many years ago I almost said in a past life but I I don't think I'll dwell on his age for too long, but he has been around for some time, my good friend Jerome Waite. And over on the other side, uh, a more recent football stalwart with Portmore United in particular, Woolery Wolf. And uh, you, you speak about a football family, you have to mention the Wolf family in Jamaica. And he's certainly one of the top representatives from that family to, to really be involved in football at all levels, really. Yeah, coming from the Spanish town area, Woolly Wolf was a name that you really heard often. You mentioned his exploits at Portmore United, also at Humble Land in Clarendon also. So yeah, he'll be looking to transmit his wit, his knowledge to this St. Diego team. Almost unable to settle as yet. St. Diego, bossing the proceedings. Here's Harris, the captain, getting Tremelik Smith into the action. Trying to find Williams, Smith deciding to go long. I think these boys will enjoy playing on this surface. They try to transition down the left-hand side. St. Jago looking, head to the byline, has two to aim for. The challenge came in at the right time. The corner conceded, however. And St. Jago continue their pressing early in this one. Yeah, St. Jago definitely starting the brighter of the two teams. Good composure on the ball and they're looking to cause Wilmers even more problems here. Corner swung in. Here is the corner kick. Not the best. It's headed away. And Wilmers, can they provide an opportunity here to, to break and come forward? They need a good ball forward. It wasn't the best to Jaden Walters who was looking to make that straight run towards the box but the the pass left a lot to be decided and now he goes the other way touched inside an opportunity with a shot blocked by the Wolmerian defense and again they tried to come forward but again not a lot of purpose as they get into St. Jago's territory they'll try again again they give up the ball Nervous opening moments, but play continues according to the referee. And what can they do with this attack? Not a lot. Yeah, not, not a lot of composure on the ball from Wilmers, or maybe too much composure at times. I think they need to try and find some more open passing options. Oh, that's a bounce that's played inside the area. And uh, couldn't quite get over it. Look in, and it was good defending in the end by Jashorn Hamilton. Yeah, but get another long kick from the goalkeeper, causing a lot of problems for Wilmers. Corner kick taken short. Didn't quite work out the way they expected it, but they still have the ball. An opportunity here. Just thinking of the shot, decided against it. Trey Malik Smith. And now he goes the other way. Walters moving away from his marker. Walters, he has some speed about him and some strength too as he's forced wide. And they're trying to win back the ball. The referee deemed that his effort was illegal, but he's going to be a handful, I think. Jaden Walters, 11 goals, two assists to his name so far. far for the Wilmerian number nine. 
just 15 years of age though and you couldn't tell could you ball headed on inside oh a strong hand with the save i'm not sure if he knew a lot about it in the end ruan melford but he did stick out a right hand and block the shot from milton lecane and yet again it's late murray in the st jago goal getting them up the field as quickly as possible and yet again st jago winning that flick hand and it was a good save by melford in the end corner kick st jago they were thinking of taking it short but it's a little bit long at the near post easily handled for another corner One did cross the line. in the attacking third can they finally build something here sent across but too much power on it he wanted a better ball add on day and the apology coming from his midfielder in uh, dante dakers yeah dante dakers was formerly a striker last season for wilmers has now converted into more of a deep like midfield role Good use of his stamina in there. 400 meter runner for Wilmers. He actually went to the final of champs last year, didn't he? Didn't medal, but definitely an all round athlete for Wilmers. They usually do well when it's the, when it's a special anniversary of champs, let's just say that. They did win champs in its 100th year with a relatively small squad. That was in 2010. They won champs. Said Jacob, of course, they've produced a number of top athletes as well. I suppose you can say that their most famous export would be one Johan Blake, world champion at 21. over the 100 meters, of course, for those who don't know. Wilmers on the attack. Still have the ball on the edge of the box, but the shot is disappointing. Yeah, that was the first real opening for Wilmers there. But once it rolled out to the top of the box, it was Benjamin Griffiths, their captain centre-back trying to stroke that one home but got a bit too much air underneath it looking for his first goal this season but uh, you can tell why he's at the back I suppose yeah but six assists yeah without a goal so he clearly has a lot of influence For St. Jago, this one is sent inside, should be easily handled, and is by Ron Melford. Yeah, I think it's going to take some good attempts to 
get the better of Melford. Really impressive goalkeeper from last season at Wilmers. Part of the Phoenix Academy. You know the type of quality that they produce in all positions. That wasn't a bad first touch at all, you know. From Ryan Anderson. Ball sent out wide now. Javoy Wright with the delivery inside, headed away. Not too far away. Lecrane trying to pick it up, has some support from his captain, Javar Harris. And they'll recycle it. Looking pretty comfortable on the ball, the Ravens. Williams. And uh, that's going to be a throw in. She has a lot of affiliation with Wilmers. But on the girls' side, Colleen Montague. But I'm sure she has no favorite here. Positive. Here's St. Jago. Oh, nice movement on the far side. Needed a better supply inside. Wilmers, they look a little bit goal shy in the opening 30 minutes of this game. Yeah, I would say Wilmers not looking too confident right now on the ball as they get one over the top. Well held by Murray yet again in the St. Jago net, but yeah, Wilmers not really passing the ball around with the verve that we've seen them with. St. Jacob definitely looking the more confident team. Closed down. St. Jacob, they were anticipating a throw. They've come all the way from Monk Street to support their side, St. Jacob. trying to get a real grip in this game going into it you're yeah, trying to control that one but couldn't quite do so Demetri Jackson let's see what they do with this attack Jackson again two to aim for gets the corner for his team though Can Wilmer's boys use this opportunity? Brooks with the delivery at the back post. Doheny running onto that one. Couldn't quite get over it and headed over the bar. Yeah, that was a peach of a delivery and it was a really good run also. Doheny stealing in at the back, coming in like a freight train even, unmarked. Yeah, we just could not steer that one goalwards. 
Warning shot from Wilmers. These two teams, obviously the the top ones in the group. They don't meet often. San Diego and Wilmers, as we see the whistle goes and it's a free kick for San Diego and this could be dangerous for Wilmers defending. Wilmers on top of the group, 24 points and Jago on 21 points and Jago looking to, to tie with them on points but the goal difference is pretty substantial at the moment. A plus 35 for Wilmers, a plus 16 for San Diego. And San Diego with the opportunity here to go ahead in this contest with this free kick. It's not a bad one. The keeper spilt it but held on to it at the second attempt. And here comes Wilmers. And there goes the opportunity. Yeah, didn't really get that one fully in his grasp. But... Oh, they've lost it in a dangerous spot. The 15-year-old has it. Walters sends it back. And Brooks looking for options back to Walters. Walters was immediately closed down and now again they try to reset Dakers, Dakers over the top. There are so many bodies to try and fire that one through and Dakers they call him Iron Man. I'm not sure if it's because of the steel in his body or because of the superhero but that wasn't a very heroic shot from the Wilmer's resident tracks man. Murray Wolf not looking too pleased with his team giving up that opportunity. I suppose he just needed to have snapped his fingers and everything would have been alright. There are a handful of Marvel fans who would get that reference. Here's it, Jago. Right on it. Right with a lofted one inside the area. And uh, it was held up in the breeze for a minute. I thought it would have provided some difficulty. Nice first touch. Looking for the return. I think they missed a trick there. Really did miss a trick. Yeah, because he was going forward down that left hand side looking. Didn't get that return ball. Yeah, I think that frustration is even being shown by their coach again. Not the best decision making. Let's see what Woolmers can muster here. Oh, what a move from Adam Day. Day plays it forward, Walters trying to get there, but the keeper gets there first. Late Murray had to, had to move quickly off his line to stop that one. Yeah, I'm really liking the flow of the game. At this point, both of these teams looking quite evenly matched. Good work again, but it's a bit too heavy for the run of Jaden Walters. Of course, you can download, download the Sportsmax app today on Google Play or the App Store. Don't miss all the excitement of Issa Schoolboy football on the app. Download it as soon as you possibly can to watch Schoolboy football, especially for free on Sportsmax Plus. Dwayne sends it long and it's kept it played. No, it wasn't.
I really like the surface here. What are your thoughts on the playing conditions at the Micro University College? Yeah, I think both the football and cricket field fields are looking quite lush. Really good surface for these teams to play and it is important that these teams, especially at a young age, are able to play on quality surfaces. Just a bit more, more moisture and I think this could be up there for one of the best surfaces possibly in the island. Trying to go around his marker, got the throw in set. Instead, did Adon Day. Walters utilizing his strength, but couldn't get by a couple of defenders. And the whistle goes. Play being called back for the throw in. Meantime, Mori requires some attention from off the bench, and I suspect that there's going to be a, a quick team meeting to be had by San Diego as well as Wilmers, making use of the uh, the break in play. But it has been a bad match so far. Yeah, I think this game has been quite interesting. Both of these teams looking to progress really quickly through the lines. Maybe not the cleanest on the ball, especially from the Woolmer's side, but they are growing into the game. St. Diego also looking really crisp, but just lacking that final ball at times. And as we hear for this water break, let's see what Jene has in store for us from a sideline report. Thank you, Leger. I am behind the St. Jago bench, Coach Wolf is a bit frustrated and unhappy with his goalkeeper's distribution. He says that he's playing it to the wing back and he would like it to go over the top and advance the team's position in their attack. So let's see if after this water break they will have any improvements in their game. It's interesting. Thanks, Janae. It is interesting because there have been a couple of instances when he has provided that killer pass in the attacking third. And you even commented on it too, Leger. Yeah, I think he act, his distribution has actually been pretty good, but it, it, maybe it's not necessarily what Coach Wooly Wolf would want at this moment in time. Maybe not what they practice. So, although I do think it has been good, has been accurate, maybe it's not necessarily what the coach's instructions would be. So, as Jenny mentioned, it's going to be really intriguing to see what sort of changes are made. Wilmers, they have done well to get by the San Diego press. Now for them to go into the attacking third. And it's been the story of their afternoon so far. They have settled a little bit more in the last 10 minutes or so, but still not quite the San Diego we know. And uh, it's an ambitious effort there from Laquan Duaney. And Jago, they do have a lot of support. Spanish Town isn't quite next door to here. In, a, in another parish, in fact. Go. Oh, he's lost it right, and it goes the other way. And Walters with the touch forward didn't quite work out. The senti. Couldn't pass it along the line. And here is Daquan Duhaney. But he does well. Duhaney he was looking for a free kick. He gets it. Yeah, good work from the wing back. Oh, a yellow card has been that's shown. A, yeah, that's a surprising one. Need to see that one again. Yeah, maybe the tackle is much rougher than we see here. Yeah, but the referee deemed it worthy enough to brandish the first yellow card of the game. Let's see what happened here, Leger. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, it was a pretty forceful <laughs> tuck of the shirt. <laughs> it was. And the yellow card shown to Jaden Jones. Oh, 
this will be handled well and is in the end there is a distribution but from one goalkeeper to the next and uh, the reaction from Wolvery Wolf is a simple conversation with his goalkeeper just to amplify the points presented by Jene just a couple of minutes to go I think he's more interested in his goalkeeper just playing a little bit more intelligently in terms of how and when to distribute the type of balls that he does. A couple of times he has been accurate, to be fair. As this ball is sent high inside the air, that's some good defending to win that initial header, Alex Hall. But uh, yeah, he concedes the corner. He concedes the corner kick. And here's Wilmers again. Shot is blocked. And San Diego can go the other way. Ball slipped through. An opportunity here. Three against three. Three against four at the moment. Wilmers tried to come back. And uh, they do have in numbers back inside the box. Yeah. Not the best attacking play there from St. Jago. They attacked with speed, but once they got into a good attacking position, it wasn't the best decision making, and Wilmers eventually cleaned up that mess. Another stoppage here. Yeah, they do have their captain on the turf, St. Jago. I did say that San Diego with your most famous male export would have been Johan Blake, but I guess it can be a discussion to to just speculate who's your most famous sporting export. In recent years it would have to be. Leger doesn't want any part of the conversation, but I was actually bringing up Bud Bunny Shaw. There can be an argument made there. As Jerome Waite contemplates for his school, Wilmers. And the fact that they are on course to finish top of the group. Seeding is also a major factor. Even if they are comfortable at top of the group, they would want another win under their belt. Walters gets his one inside the box. Forced to turn, now he seeks some support. And Wilmers, they are sending the cavalry. Duaney, Duaney! Yeah, Wilmers clearly not shy of, shy about getting shots off. Doesn't matter where they're coming from. I think maybe a little bit more patience in and around that box would serve them well. Also would like a little bit more width amongst the front players. Too often we're seeing maybe a like a cluster of Wilmers players joining the cluster of St. Jago players looking to block, block them out. So maybe a winger or the wing backs holding width to maybe draw out some of those St. Jago defenders will serve them pretty well of, to create space. Nicely done by Wilmers. Oh, that's beautiful football. But they lost it as soon as they got into the San Diego half. They'll try again. Walters, oh, I just love his strength. The 15-year-old can go anywhere. Can he? Walters. Still Walters. Oh, he goes down. Never saw that one coming at all. As San Diego, they go the other way. Slick football. Ball slips through. That's a late challenge. Free kick to St. Jago High. Yeah. Good driving run throughout the through the heart of the midfield by JD Mitchell. The two-goal man for St. Jago. And no surprise that 
we're going well i mean it is a surprise because this is not something that we see often but just judging by the ability of his or the, the, the accuracy that we've seen from his ball striking so far it's going to be their goalkeeper Leighton Murray stepping up to take this free kick for St. Jago. The last goalkeeper saw taking free kicks with really good accuracy was Rodrigo Seni of Sao Paulo from Brazil. Well, this is Leighton Murray from St. Jago with the free kick. Punted that one! Oh! oh, what a strike from the big man in the goal! Leighton Murray, eat your heart out! That is a stunning kick! And what a way to get your first goal this season! And he stuns the boys from Hero Circle! What a goal! What a hit! What a hit indeed! I said that we don't see it often, but this is why maybe we should. And honestly, I'm lost for words. And maybe Johnny Gill could describe this goal a bit better. Because my, 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 mama, mama, my, my, what a strike. Leighton Murray, and it's St. Jago. One, Wilmer's High School nil. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> if that was a star-making moment, you have to appreciate that one. You really do have to appreciate it from Leighton Murray. That was a hit and a half. It really was. And poor Rowan Melford. You saw the shock of the shoulders and the raising of the arms. He could do nothing about that. And here's St. Jago looking for a second. You have to wonder if St. Jago has Woolman's ticket. Yeah, because it's always some, um, I don't want to say free accidents or free goals that come about. Of course, I mentioned the inclement weather that really affected their first game, the 2-0, that St. Jago won. But then now we have a free kick from around 30 yards from a goalkeeper. That has Wilmers down now. Wow. Still trying to get my breath back from that one. And I know it's going to and I know it's going to be very, very easy for that one to be included in the top ten at the end of the season. Oh, if there are nine better goals than that one, it would be one of the best schoolboy football seasons we would have ever seen. Well, they're still stunned, but they need a reaction at home. Momentum is everything as you head into the second round. Wilmers wouldn't want to take this match for granted at all. Here they are looking for the equalizer. Day inside, lovely stuff by Brooks. The ending wasn't particularly lovely. Yeah, I said that Wilmers aren't shy from shoot about shooting from range, and I think if they want anyone to be doing that, it is Nathaniel Brooks. Really, really good left foot on him. We've seen him score some corkers from last season coming into this one as well. In the preseason as well. I haven't really seen him impact the game as I would have liked for someone of his quality. Yeah. Turned into trouble there. Did Vicente. But Walters with a lovely takedown and trying to switch the plate. It right, is Vicente over on the far side trying to get on the end of that one. Yeah, that was a late challenge on day, it seems. 
So apparently Brooks is in the referee's book. The woman's number 10. Here's a free kick lofted inside the area. Couple of Woodmerians going down. One staying down. And the play is going to be stopped. And a, a lack of communication between the two women's players there. And it's Dante Dacus who comes out worse for wear from that challenge. With his teammate, Duhaney. Chance for some more instructions now, perhaps. And some hydration. I think they're loving the, the football game that they're watching. And uh, Wolver Wolf ever talking to his players. He was that kind of player as well, you know. The sponsors are also in the house as well. You know, it's one of those things again, Donald, you know, usually I, I go with some eccentric picks for man of the match. And I've really been impressed with him performance from Leighton Murray up until that point. Although maybe his coach wouldn't have liked some of his kicks, but this has made it so much more easier for me to pick his name out at the end of the game if things were to stay this way. <laughs> Oh, I'll forever remember that celebration. Day has lost it. And Wright trying to thread that one through didn't work. And this is Brooks. And Brooks over the top, ambitious effort. Solid kick up field. Some issues here, possibly. The keeper comes out to collect. <laughs> this time, his coach doesn't say a word <laughs> to him. <laughs> I don't think he's going to be saying much words to him. <laughs> no. About his delivery he's for like, any time soon. You can do anything you want, man. You want to clean the touch? <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's football in a nutshell. Free kick to Wilmers. What can Daquan Duhaney do with this delivery? Two man wall already set up by Leighton Murray. Here is Duhaney. And that one now goes through. He saw it late, had to react, Murray. Parried it away from the danger area and was helped up by his defense. Went into the ear of uncertainty, didn't it? To use yeah. a cricketing term. Yeah, it really did. One of the St. Jago defenders there were sleeping, allowed a free run yet again, not for the first time in this game, but yeah, good reactions again by Leighton Murray. Wilmers, desperate for the equaliser here, thinking of a shot, it was charged down, clearance made against, again Brooks is so very involved and wants to get that shot off every time he's near the box, and the for, number 10. And for really good reason. 
St. Jago on the transition or attempting to transition. The Wilmers, they do have enough players back, but Wright wins it. Well played. Williams was under pressure. And Wilmers looking to transition again. Dakers. And now Reed with a more than hopeful ball. No issues there for <laughs> Leighton Murray, who's becoming more and more of a showman by the minute. Remember that you can watch Schoolboy Football free this season on the Sportsmax app. You can download it today. So keep abreast of all the action, all the football action. And we have some lovely features and surprises on it for you as well. As here's Wilmers trying to come forward through Adon Day. But Day has seen the door shut so many times on him so far this afternoon. Dakers. Dakers. Duaney. Duaney will do a long throw here. Not the most convincing clearance. Duaney has it again. Taking the route to the byline. Was he brought down? He was. Free kick awarded to Wilmers. really is a nice atmosphere here at the Micah University College. Murray wanted a third body in the wall. Here's the free kick. And this one, oh, it's taken well by the custodian. He's having fun out there. Free kick for St. Jago. Hall to take it. And uh, the keeper holding on to it. Then feeding it out wide quickly. And Duaney trying to keep possession but couldn't quite do so. Harris sends it out wide. Ball played forward. Not a bad first touch it was from Lucane. And he earns a corner kick for his team. Yeah, did extremely well there to earn that corner. More good transitional play by St. Jago. And now they have a corner to try and swing in. Three minutes of stoppages to be played as San Diego with your fifth corner kick now. Can they make good use of it? Holds delivery. It's not a bad one at all. The header was blocked. Jones. Oh, he had to go in. And maybe his studs were showing. While the referee deemed that to be a little bit over the top. And he is on a yellow card, so he has to be extremely dangerous. I'm actually really surprised that wasn't a second. Let's see why. 
Yeah, that oh, has he, to he, be. He missed, the bo he missed the ball. I thought he actually got it, you know. Yeah, that but has to maybe be a second it, yellow. Maybe it's because it was the outer part of his boots as opposed to stu his studs. I think it's one of those cases where he, if he hadn't been carded earlier, that would have been a yellow card. So I think it's really tough that the referee didn't give one there, but he lives to fight another day. It's one of those things that if the player had come off injured or if it was his touch showing, he would have been in some serious problems. Wilmers. Lovely skip away, forced wide. The final minute of stoppage time, and I'm wondering what they are thinking just before the halftime interval. I'm wondering what Lance Whitaker is thinking. Maybe looking on at this scoreline, maybe a little bit surprised by the fact that his former school is behind. Sir Lance, I don't think he's usually surprised when his teams lose. He will always say that he expected it, but they'll bounce back. So maybe he's still keeping the positivity. I get quite a geese, I suppose. Dwayne. They don't have a lot of time here. In fact, time has run out for the first half. And St. Jago in control based on the scoreline at the interval. And who would have thought that their number one would have been the one to provide them the goal in the first 45. Leighton Murray with his first goal this season. A fantastic free kick it was. And the Woolery Wolves team, they do have the advantage and at the end of the first half, the Ravens, they're flying high over the Maroons. And it's 1-0 the score, St. Jago over Wilmers.